How's it going guys? Welcome to our first episode on how to do HTML and CSS. Now in this course here, we're going to talk about what HTML and CSS is and how we can use it to create complete websites. Now in this first episode, we're going to talk about what exactly HTML and CSS can do and what you need to have in order to get started when it comes to making websites. Now HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language, which basically means we can take HTML, wrap it around some content inside some kind of coding document, and by doing this, we then tell the browser what exactly this content is. So basically, we can tell the browser using HTML that a specific section is the main content of the website. Another section might be the menu of the website. So we can use HTML to mark up specific parts of a website and tell the browser what it is. So it's important to understand that HTML is basically a language that describes the structure or the content inside websites. Now we talked a bit about what exactly HTML is, but what about CSS? Now CSS is a language that you don't need to learn in order to write a website using HTML. But without CSS, you can actually style the content inside the website, meaning that you can actually decide how the content should look like. So let's take an example. If I had a menu inside my website, the CSS code is actually what decides how the menu should look like, you know, how big the letters should be, what color the text should be, or where inside the website it should be positioned. So we need to learn CSS if you want to make a website pretty and structure the layout inside the browser. Now CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets, which again explains that you can style content inside HTML. So now that we talked about what exactly HTML and CSS is, I would like to show you guys an example of how HTML actually looks like. So inside my text editor here, I'm going to go into the second file I have. And as you guys can see, we have some very basic HTML code. Now, like I explained, HTML is basically used to wrap tags around content such as text that you then display inside a website. Now we're not going to get into what these tags specifically means, at least not in this episode, but just to give you guys a basic idea of what exactly HTML and CSS looks like, this is how it looks like. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and take a look at a few text editors like the one I have open here that we can use to create websites. So if you have any questions regarding how we actually make the website, such as the actual process, basically we have a folder on our computer, which contains all the documents and images and basically all the media that we have inside the website. It contains all these things. And then we later on upload this folder to an online server. And it's the documents inside the folder that we need to create using HTML and CSS, like the one I have in front of me here. So now let's talk about the tools you might need to actually create a website. Now, like you guys may guess, you need a computer, which I have in front of me here, and you need to have a basic text editor. Now, the one I'm using here is called Sublime Text, which is free. So if you want to download it, you can go ahead and go to sublimetext.com. And then inside this website, you can go ahead and download Sublime Text. Now, this version is actually free, like I mentioned, but if you don't want to get pop-ups from time to time that says, please buy the full version, then you will need to pay a small amount. Now, the other text editor I'm gonna show you guys that you could use, which is also free, is called Notepad++. And you might think, well, if you haven't heard about Notepad++ before, we do actually have a program on our computer called Notepad which is the basic version of this text editor, which you can actually use in order to create websites, but since Notepad is not really good for that, since it doesn't have any kind of colors or indicators to whether or not your code is correct, I'm going to recommend Notepad++, which can also be used as a basic text editor. Now, this one will not come up with any kind of pop-ups if you do not buy it. So if you don't feel like paying anything in your title pop-ups inside Sublime Text, you can go ahead and use this one instead. And of course, there's other software out there you could actually use for creating websites, but I'm just going to mention these two because these are the more basic ones that doesn't confuse newer people. Now, just to answer a few questions before we actually get into the next lesson, because there are some questions that I get asked quite often when it comes to creating websites, which first of all is, can you in fact create a website without being connected to the internet? Yes, you can, because you can, in fact, have your website inside the folder on your computer. Like I said, this is how we actually create a website and open up the documents inside your browser without having to be connected to the internet. Another question I sometimes get is, can I, in fact, if I code a website inside Sublime Text, open up the same documents inside another editor, such as Notepad++? Yes, you can, because the text editor is not something that creates specific 
documents or files only used inside these programs. So if you were to create this HTML file here and I save it, I can open up inside any kind of text editor. The next thing I want to mention is some people also ask me about how long it takes to actually learn HTML before they can make a website. Like I said in the beginning, it depends on you. If you like to have a long sitting where you just learn episode after episode until you can actually upload a website, then you could potentially do it in just one day. But again, I think if you want to do more complicated websites, you might need to learn a few more episodes than just, you know, what you can do in one day. Now, the next question I'm going to answer is regarding what you can actually do inside a website using HTML and CSS. So as you guys can see, I have my YouTube page here, which is in fact the YouTube website. And inside this page, we have a bunch of elements. Up in the top here, we have a bar that has the YouTube logo that links back to YouTube's front page. We have a navigation at the side. We have a search bar. We also have a couple of tools like profile related tools over in the right side. We have my profile page with a banner and some logos and some videos down here at the bottom with some different buttons here. Now, when it comes to HTML and CSS, the only thing we can create using HTML and CSS is the visible part inside the website. So we can in fact create everything inside this page here, but we can't create all the functionalities inside the page. So we could using HTML and CSS, program this bar up in the top and the look of it and insert all the images and all that stuff we need to have in here. We could also create the search bar if we wanted to, but without using other programming languages, we can't create functionality. Meaning that if I were to actually type something up in the search bar and actually search for it, it's not gonna be able to work, at least not without using other languages. So we can create everything in here. We can insert images, we can insert links, so we can actually go back and forth between pages. Uh, but we can create stuff like subscribe, log in, search bars, uh, even the videos down here are actually loaded in from a database, which requires another language in order to actually interact with the database. So we can create videos and the text you guys see down here, but we have to code it in manually inside the code. We can not actually get the data automatically from a database. And now I'm actually talking about databases, which some of you guys might not know what is actually used for inside a website. But the main thing I want to get across here is that uh, you can program everything you see inside the website, but not the functionalities, okay? So we can make everything, but you just need to hard code it, meaning that if you need to change something, you have to do it using code each time, which again is totally doable, but it might be easier when you have functionalities that allow for you to change stuff using other languages later on. The last thing I want to mention before going to the next episode is that the color scheme inside my Sublime Text, if you decide to get Sublime Text, does not look exactly the same as yours if you just download Sublime Text and installed it and opened it up. Because I'm actually using a different color scheme inside Sublime Text. So if I write some code inside my editor and it doesn't have the same color as yours, don't get freaked out. The colors inside your screen doesn't mean there's any kind of errors. It is just basically because I have another color scheme, okay? So this is basically what I want to say for the first episode. In the next episode, we're going to learn how to actually get started on our first website and how to actually create the folder that I talked about, which we call a root folder, and how to create our first document inside this root folder, which is going to be the front page of our website. If you guys are interested in more tutorials from me, you can go ahead and check out my channel and subscribe for more content. So I hope to see you guys in the next episode.